days at the stick. From who's got it better than us to brick by brick. It's always the 49ers way from off season to game day. Yeah, we talk back. It's the 49ers cut back. It's 49ers Cutback Podcast Time. Welcome to the show. Day four. San Francisco 49ers training camp is in the books. And a lot of big news coming out of Santa Clara because the offense strikes back in this great practice that the 49ers had. And it was a practice that was without Brock Purdy, but there was a lot to be talked about, not just from the quarterback position. And I'm sure we'll talk quarterbacks because... That is what everyone's talking about. But the leadoff for this has to be Brandon Ayuk. And of course, I've been talking about how good Brandon Ayuk has looked during his training camp practices, and he continues to step up every step of the way. Brandon Ayuk is becoming the complete package at the wide receiver position for the 49ers. He now has a complete understanding of what they want from a wide receiver in Kyle Shanahan's system. He has a mastery of the routes. By having a mastery of the routes and knowing the timing, he can now have a lot of fun with what he's doing. George Kittle talked a little bit about this in his presser, uh, his training camp presser. He talked about how, hey, everything is predicated on timing. A lot of the teams around the league aren't this way. Of course, 49er fans are used to hearing about offenses predicated on timing after Bill Walsh, right? It was a three-step drop, get rid of the ball. It was a three-step drop and a hitch. Get rid of the football. Everything was timing. The receivers knew how many steps to take to be in the right spot. And that's what George Kittle was talking about. He was talking about, hey, you take seven steps, you turn around, the quarterback had, you know, a three-step with a hitch, and he got rid of the football, and it's there. And Brandon Ayuk figured that out. Once he figured out how he fit within this 49ers offense and what it took to be in the right spot at the right time, then he could start adding his little twist on what he was doing. But what did that mean? That meant he could give a little extra here or there to create separation in his route running. So the 49ers now have a very dangerous weapon in Brandon Ayuk. Not only does Ayuk understand the 49ers offense inside and out, his role, how he's supposed to operate for Kyle Shanahan as an ex receiver, but also Kyle Shanahan understands fully what skill set Brandon Ayuk has. He knows his speed. He knows his route running ability. He knows how he can create separation. He knows which routes he's better. He knows which foot he can create better leverage with, how good he is at the top of his stem to be able to create separation, how he is stacking routes. There's so many things that go in to using a player to his best ability, and I think Kyle Shannon understands how to do that with Ayuk, and Ayuk understands what his best abilities are and now can fully function within this 49ers offense It's tremendous to see. And Brandon Ayuk went out there at training camp, and he had four touchdowns. Now, of course, some of those were in the red zone, three touchdowns in the red zone for Brandon Ayuk, but then a potential 50-yard touchdown for Ayuk. Of course, a little harder to tell at practice because they don't have pads on right now, and if they did, the defense would wrap him up. But it appeared he had the necessary space to be able to create and get to the end zone. So Brandon Ayuk was talking about, hey, it's time for liftoff. And it appears it is time for liftoff for Brandon Ayuk. And what does that mean impact-wise for the rest of his football team? That's good news. Because if you're having to worry about Brandon Ayuk because he can smoke you know, one-on-one coverage or he's dangerous, then you're going to have to start moving other players to help with him in his own. Or if it's man coverage, they have to give you help over the top. Or they absolutely get cooked. What that does is that opens up things for other players. It could open up things for uh, Debo Samuel. Uh, This could make them better because they have a different skill set. So where one can be highly successful, it can open things up for the other. That means more opportunities for Debo to make big plays. More open spaces over the middle for George Kittle or Christian McCaffrey. It's an exciting time in San Francisco because when you draft and develop the way the San Francisco 49ers do, then once the development kind of hits its peak, like it appears it's getting to with Brandon Ayuk, then that's when it pays huge dividends. 
You have to be able to completely take advantage of those. But right now, Brandon Ayuk is the number one receiver out there on the field. Every single snap he's out there. He is just a problem for defenders. It doesn't mean that Debo doesn't have a similar impact just in a different way, but it means Ayuk is reaching his full potential of what he could be, and it's right at the right time. One of the things Ayuk has been excited about is the quarterbacks, quarterback room because they have four talented quarterbacks, and Ayuk knows what the importance is of having a quarterback that can get you the football consistently. After 2020 and Jimmy Garoppolo going down early, and then the injury issues with Jimmy in 2021, and all the injury issues at the quarterback position in 2022, he knows it's paramount for him to have success to have a very talented quarterback room. And the 49ers are showing that talent quarterback room on display every single day at practice. Now, in day three, the conversation was, hey, nobody really had a great day. You know, maybe Trey struggled a little bit. Brandon Allen, you know, there's talk about the reps with the quarterbacks and all of that. But what we've seen day day one, day two, day three, was that some of these guys are getting a grip on what is going on. And I think you can't really get too high or too low on what happens from one practice to the other. You're looking for consistency. So what you want to see is, hey, somebody trending in the right direction or, hey, somebody's always you know, being pretty accurate in this category or that category. And I think that's what the 49ers are looking to build is that that go ahead and get that chemistry with wide receivers all the while stacking plays on top of each other. And Sam Darnold has been doing good since day two. Day one was a little shaky. Felt like he was trying to find his footing within this 49ers offense. I'm sure it was a little bit different being out there for training camp the first time. You never could tell from him. He was cool, calm, and collected. But once he got out there in day two, you could tell. It was like, okay, I know this step. I know what I'm supposed to do. I know the defensive read. My back foot's going to hit, and I'm going to get rid of the football. And he did it. So Sam Darnold was elevating his game as we went into day two. Day three, he continued that trend and started making some good throws. And then in day four, he absolutely made some great throws. So Sam Darnold is trending in the right direction. And I think that's exciting for the San Francisco 49ers because we've talked about it. You can't have one or two good quarterbacks anymore. The way that defenses get after your quarterback, you need to have two or three. And the 49ers have one of the most talented quarterback rooms, top to bottom, in the entire NFL. And Sam Darnold playing well is pivotal for the 49ers' success. We don't know how good Brock Purdy is going to be yet. I mean, we've seen it last year. We're optimistic, but he's coming back from a UCL injury. Now, the good news is, hey, the arm looks strong. The arm looks capable. He's on the right path. It's going to be two days of practice on, two days of practice off right now. And then eventually it'll go two days on, one day off, and they're going to just keep working him in. But having Darnold be able to have success within this offense is very important for the 49ers. Number one, It makes the team better. Number two, it pushes a player like Trey Lance to continue his development. So Sam Darnold goes out there and goes eight of 10 with three red zone touchdowns. That's a great day. But Trey Lance didn't have a bad day either. He's five of eight with one red zone touchdown. And that was, and he also had a carry of 15 yards. I believe that was a red zone touchdown. So you've got some talent there between those two guys, both of them former third round picks. I think overall, as far as quarterback situation, this is good news for the San Francisco 49ers, having these guys be capable. And of course, there's been conversations about, hey, you know, the the reps aren't even. Well, I believe it's going to balance out. Going into day four, Trey Lance had accounted for just over 21% of the snaps for the 49ers. They have four quarterbacks, of course. When Brock Purdy's practicing, he's going to get a bulk of the snaps, especially the snaps with the ones. But those days that he's not uh, practicing, those are going to be days where Darnold and Trey Lance are going to make up those snaps, and it's going to slowly even out. If Brock Purdy was just number one quarterback in most uh, areas, these second and third string guys wouldn't even get that many snaps. So the fact that Brock Purdy is working his way back in as part of his rehabilitation, 
is making more opportunities for Trey Lance and for Sam Darnold, and even for Brandon Allen, who had himself a pretty good day as well. Three of five, one red zone touchdown. Of course, the touchdown goes to Brandon Ayuk because he was doing all kinds of big things. But we've seen this quarterback room kind of have a really good day. What we've talked about when it comes to offense and defense, there are going to be days in training camp that are about the defense. There's going to be days that are about the offense for a couple of reasons. First off, you just start out better as a defense because you're playing off instincts. You're reacting. Uh, you're going through your coverages. The offense has a lot of moving parts that they have to get together. It's also going through install. And what install is, is putting in your offense or putting in your defense. With defense, you've been able to do a lot of the coverages and things since OTAs. With offense, it's a little bit slower of a process. Even though they understand what they're supposed to do, getting all those pieces to work together in one accord is a little difficult. So they also don't move very fast in their install. It's going to go pretty simple. We're running these particular run plays with these particular pass plays. And the next day, it'll go to another one and another one. And that's why you see them entering into play action, entering into red zone. It's all a process as they're installing the offense. They did it during OTAs. They did it during minicamp. And that's how you start training camp to reacclimate everybody together. It helps for with coaches. It helps with players all being on the same page. So during that period, it's definitely difficult for an offense to have success against a defense. Once they figure it out and the install is complete and Kyle Shanahan can start running all the plays he wants to run at any particular time and not just certain ones for that practice, it will make it more difficult for the defense to understand what's coming their way. Of course, that's when it gets more difficult for a quarterback too because now a defense has full install and they can start running shell coverages. That means, hey, they can make you think it's a it's a too high shell right now. That means two deep safeties. Next thing you know, right before pre-snap, they shift and it's a one safety look. And then you have to determine what that coverage is. Are those corners bailing and it's a cover three? You know, I mean, what is going on? You have to figure it out. You have to decipher what is there and then make the appropriate play. And I think as this process goes, you're going to have days where the defense is really good and you're going to have days where the offense is really good. And then some days it's going to be a stalemate. But also into that is Kyle Shanahan and Steve Wilkes work in concert to have certain things come to pass. So if Kyle Shanahan wants to see his offense going against a particular defense of look, and he knows it could be a strain for his offense, he'll still do it. The defense gets to work on the techniques they want to work on, but they're going to have more success against that offensive set that's not really built to go against that defense. With the other side, you can do it as well. Maybe Steve Wilkes has a certain defensive coverage. He wants to see them run where they're rotating, they're moving pre-snap, and Kyle Shanahan can facilitate that. But it means the offense, when running that, because it's not particularly the defensive coverage you'd want to run against this set, but you, that's what you're in, it allows the offense to have some success. So they do work in concert to make sure that they're giving each other certain looks. Uh, they're making sure they're pushing their players to certain levels, making them adjust on the fly. It's all about a controlled practice. It's less about success. Now, if you're in the offensive situation to where you're supposed to have success because you're going against a defense you're supposed to beat, then yeah, Kyle Shanahan's going to hold you to higher standards because those are times you should win. When it's the defense, it's like, hey, we should have talked. We should have had a conversation. We should have switched to this. But we were in a position where, hey, they had us on that play. We did the best we could. We adjusted on the fly. We made a play, right? When you get into those situations, you're just hoping sometimes that a defensive lineman can get a sack or a cornerback can make a read or he can they can do something special and get away with it. So I think that the, remembering that when you're hearing about how good certain players are doing or how good some of the stats are, I think they're going to be determined by how these guys you know, work together in practice and figure out offense and defense and I think it's it's really nice that you have that sort of relationship. It was really good with D'Amico Ryans. Uh, he talked about it in detail when Mike McDaniel was in San Francisco the last year as the offensive coordinator, and they worked really good about certain looks, 
uh, in the run game, certain looks in the pass game. And I think that's what training camp is really about, is working together to benefit not only the team itself, but those players. And then after that, evaluating those players in those situations. So right now, we're going to be getting into pads in day five, and then we're going to get to see how exactly the offensive defensive line look. And that'll make a big difference on evaluations as well. Right now, you're evaluating guys in shirts and shorts. Uh, So as Kyle Shanahan said in his press conference, you're not really doing a whole lot of evaluating right now. Right now, you're just trying to make sure that, hey, the install's going in, players understand what they're supposed to do, and then you get them in those situations. But what we're starting to see is uh, the offensive defense kind of take form, and you're seeing that there's a tremendous amount of strength on offense and defense. You're also throwing in there, you know, vet days along the way too, as some of these guys have days off. Players like Trent Williams had a veteran day. Christian McCaffrey had a veteran day. And then you had a player like Traverius Ward who didn't go through 11 on 11s. He's dealing with a little bit of a groin issue. Something that Mooney Ward dealt with last year as far as like little muscle injuries early on in training camp that kind of sideline him but that he's usually able to come back from. So he was doing individual drills, but the 49ers are definitely going to monitor it. But we've seen pretty consistently the 49ers make sure that they rest players. They give them, you know, maintenance days so that way they can stay fresh and healthy. They're doing it with Brock Purdy. It'll be consistent with Trent Williams, George Kittle, uh, Christian McCaffrey. They're going to make sure they give these guys days off. So that way they can stay healthy and be their best players once they get in, you know, to the actual games that matter. When that happens, it leaves a lot of opportunity for the players behind them. So players like Jalen Moore being able to get extra reps playing left tackle, and he's in competition with Matt Pryor to see who's going to be the swing tackle. And so anytime that Trent Williams doesn't practice, it's not a bad thing for the 49ers. It's a good one or some of the depth pieces that are trying to go out there and compete who wouldn't normally get reps with the number one offense. And now they do. Uh, So Jalen Moore is going to be, you know, doing that pretty consistently throughout training camp. Of course, he'll be evaluated also through the preseason games, but that's good news. It's not bad things for the 49ers to have veteran players have vet days and maintenance days because it just helps the other positions be able to step up. And in the grand scheme of things, at some point during the season, the 49ers are probably going to have to count on, you know, over 60 players to come in and compete for their football team, depending on injuries and things like that that happen. That's why you hear the players talk all the time about, you know, having a 53-man roster, and then you have a 16-man practice squad. In the 49ers case, 17 with Alfredo Gutierrez. You're probably going to have to count on 69 of those players to help you in practice or games. And that's why it's so important when building your roster. So these reps that Moore's getting are very important. And I think it's interesting that Coach Chris Furster, when he talked over the weekend about Matt Pryor, talked about how when Pryor came into OTAs, he was out of shape. He wasn't exactly where the 49ers wanted him to be as far as physically. So I've seen Matt Pryor on film. I thought on film, and then I seen him in person at training camp. And I did think that Matt Pryor uh, feet looked slow early on. Uh, during training camp, first day or so. But I did think when we got into some of the later practices, he's definitely showed more. He got a nice push in day two on the edge. I was able to get a push on the defensive end and create a nice run lane for the 49ers in the outside zone. So I think Pryor is in competition with Jalen Moore, but Moore right now has the upper hand. Same thing on the other side of the football. When you have guys like Nick Bosa that aren't practicing, that allows Drake Jackson and Cleveland Farrell to go out there. Uh, Steve Wilkes decided he was going to go through some of his blitz packages in day four of training camp, and Drake Jackson had to drop off in the zone blitz and got matched up one-on-one on on a wheel route with Elijah Mitchell going down the field. Not normally the kind of matchup you're looking for uh, when it comes to tailback running back that has a 4-3 speed capability like Elijah Mitchell compared to Drake Jackson, who just got his weight over 260 pounds as a defensive end. But Jackson ran stride for stride with him, and the ball ended up bouncing off of Drake Jackson's shoulder. So it was a nice route by Elijah Mitchell. Maybe the pass was a little underthrown uh, by Trey Lance, but 
I mean, that just shows the athletic ability of Drake Jackson. And you got to think that makes Steve Wilkes feel better about some of his blitz packages when he wants to go to these zone blitzes where he's going to be able to drop off his defensive ends. We know that Vic Fangio had said he believed Nick Bosa could play a 3-4 outside linebacker. We know Drake Jackson, when he was at USC, they played him at a off-ball linebacker. So they have the capabilities to drop these guys off. Austin Bryant, tremendously athletic. Um, other players along the defensive line have that athleticism as well to be able to kind of drop off. So Nick Bosa missing is giving Farrell and Drake Jackson extra reps. I think that's really going to benefit them as we get into pads. And let's see what this looks like now. If Drake Jackson can prove that that athletic ability can translate to him setting the edge against the run and then being able to bend the corner in the pass game, the Foreigners are going to feel very comfortable with the defensive end opportunities that Drake's going to get opposite of Bosa. And you've got to feel like they think they struck gold with a second round pick in 2021. So, or 2022. So I'm excited about, you know, what we're hearing about Drake Jackson, what I've seen when I've been at training camp. It seems like Drake Jackson's trending in the right direction. And some of these, you know, Nick Bosa holdout uh, is not all bad because you're getting opportunities for other players to go ahead and step in and succeed. And that's the same thing that's happening with Mooney Ward. You're going to get a guy like Sam Womack and a guy like Ambry Thomas getting extra reps during team drills so that way they can go in and show out and we can see exactly where they are in their development. For Ambry Thomas is trying to recapture what he did in 2021. For Sam Womack is trying to get out there again. He started week one and two of the 2022 season as a rookie in the nickel. Now he's trying to translate to outside. So I think that, you know, it's opportunity there. And with the 49ers resting players like Hargrave and Armstead, there's opportunities at D tackle too. Start hearing about guys like Spencer Wagey being able to go in and, and get some pressure on the quarterback and forcing the quarterback outside the pocket. It was Trey Lance that had to escape and ended up getting a nice run on the play. But you're seeing some of these young guys be able to step up. Aliyah Davis uh, did miss practice. Um, of course, they're going to, tr- I'm sure, monitor him and make sure that he stays healthy because they want to keep him fresh and ready to go. But Javon Kinlaw was out there consistently. He hasn't had any maintenance days. He's been practicing. Kevin Givens, the same thing. So you can see the depth along the defensive line, and the 49ers are going to be able to get extra reps for these guys. And I think that's one thing that I really like about what the 49ers do is they consistently mix up the grouping. So it's not always, uh, you know, first team defense on first team offense. They will kind of shift it up. So that way you get to see some of your backup guys against really good players and you get different looks. Uh, So you could see, you know, a player like Kevin Givens against Jake Brendel and Spencer Burfer. They're not, it's not always Armstead and Hargrave. Of course, when Armstead and Hargrave are going against Brendel, Burford, and Banks, uh, main event, right? Ding, ding. But it is good to see Austin Bryant against Trent Williams or, you know, Kerry Hyder or Robert Beal Jr. Those are matchups that we still want to see, and that rotation helps. That's the same on the other side of the football. A lot of people talked about the fact, hey, Brendan Ayuk was going against, you know, guys that potentially weren't starters. It's not like he was beating Mooney Ward or Diameter Lenore when Sam Darnold was finding him. Uh, but he was still going against really good players. And he was going against Mitchell, Terrence Mitchell. And Mitchell's a 10-year veteran that has nine interceptions on his career. He's not exactly a slouch in the league. Yeah, he's the 49ers signed him late, but he's a guy that understands coverage, understands what he's supposed to do, and has done enough to stay in the league for 10 years. That's impressive for any player. And Brandon Ayuk smoked him. And the reason is because Ayuk is just great. But we've talked about this on the, the show before, is the the way the 49ers use their wide receivers, they'll play with the first team, the second team, and the third team, no matter how good they are. They, they just keep putting them through, so that way they can see them with different matchups, working them with different quarterbacks, It just gives you a variety of different looks. And that way, too, you can keep the training reps down. You don't want those reps to get too high and then have a little bit of struggle. So I think that the 49ers are liking where they're at as far as reps and how some of their players have been playing right now. Uh, So I'm, I'm really enjoying the progress that we're having from training camp 
on both sides of the football. I think we've seen days where the defense is taking over, whether that is a secondary locking people down, creating interceptions, getting pressure on the quarterback. I do say pressure on the quarterback, you have to kind of take with a grain of salt a little bit. There's no pads. Once you get pads and the defense gets pressure on the quarterback, that's legit. Uh, so we're going to see some of these offensive players tested, and I know that's what a lot of people are really excited to see. One of the things I'm excited to see about day five of 49ers training camp is Colton McKivitz. We're finally going to get a good look at McKivitz. Trent Williams should be back. Brock Purdy will be back. And we're going to get a good look at the first-team offense. My guess is Christian McCaffrey plays, and the 49ers in the first day of pads. Of course, you're not hitting the quarterback. They're going to blow the whistle before there's any contact on you know, Purdy getting anyone close, but you're going to get an idea of how they ha- handle it. And on the inverse, we're going to be able to see Cleveland Farrell and Drake Jackson, Robert Beal, Austin Bryant going against this 49ers offensive line. It should be really exciting because this is when – we finally find out offensive and defensively who's who in the zoo once you start getting those pads on. And also, the run game takes a hold. But right now, when you're watching running backs, and you know, we've heard a lot of things about the running backs. I talked about in day one, TDP having a real ascension, and now Kyle Shanahan saying, yeah, you know, TDP's on a different level now. But we've talked about how some of these running backs look. Well, we can't evaluate them on on very much right now because of contact. Defenders have been having to go behind them or in front of them and not really stop them because they they want these plays to develop, but also they don't have pads, so they don't want collisions. Well, now when you get pads on, you're allowed to have collisions. You're allowed to hit and wrap. Of course, you don't want to bring them to the ground, but you're allowed to hit and wrap. So now we're going to really get to evaluate O-line, D-line, linebackers, nickel corners in run fits, and, of course, the running back position. So this is when it gets a little bit interesting. You throw in tight ends as far as inline blocking. So let's see where Cameron Latu and Braden Willis are. And then also, then they have to buy into play action a little bit more. So it's going to be so much fun. I can't wait to see you know the offense take shape, the defense take shape in pads, and I'm looking forward to a Jair Brown versus Jordan Mason collision. And of course, I have to mention that Jordan Mason now has two fumbles during training camp. Do I think he has fumbleitis? I don't. I think they're going to work on it. It's something that he's going to have to fix. He didn't fumble at all last year. And I'm sure Kyle Shanahan, Anthony Lynn, and Bobby Turner are going to be on him about making sure this isn't a concern. Also, Trey Lance did put a ball on the ground on a bad snap. He patted to himself. It doesn't mean that was his fault, but it could have been. And if it was, then they got to make sure they fix it. But this is not uncommon to happen during training camp, to have these bad connections between centers and quarterbacks. That quarterback to center exchange uh, can be a little bit difficult. And Jake Brendel has to get used to going and working with multiple quarterbacks. And these quarterbacks have to get used to working with multiple centers. So it's going to happen from time to time. If it was something that was happening consistently, you know, once every like seven snaps or even, you know, we're having one each day, I'd be concerned. But other than that, I'm not really concerned about those things. I'm not really concerned overall about the numbers of any position, just that these guys continue to develop. So, yeah, it's been a fun training camp so far. Day five and six are going to be in pads, and then that will conclude block two. So we got a couple more days of block two of training camp for the San Francisco 49ers. And I'm sure there'll be tremendous amount of news uh, coming as well. 49ers cut back on believe. Thank you guys all for watching and listening. I really appreciate it. I hope you guys will all let me know what you thought about the updates. Uh, What do you think about Sam Darnold? And what do you think about Brandon? Ayuk just absolutely taking over. Let me know in the comments section. If you're watching on YouTube, like and subscribe to the channel. Really appreciate it on the push for 4k if you're listening on an audio platform if you're on spotify apple podcast you're listening on believe uh give me a five star rating i really appreciate it goes to help the channel out a lot there'll be a brand new episode tomorrow talking about day five of training camp hope you guys will all join me for that but until then stay safe and remember the right way is always the 49ers way